So you've been interested in playing the Mesmer because you saw some player create four copies of himself and then beat down a group of enemies single-handedly. Well, kind of. You decide to create a character and you are now utterly confused. And no, not like the condition confused, you're actually confused. Well, that's where I'm going to help you out. This is the new player's guide to the Mesmer in Guild Wars 2 in 2023. This guide will have an emphasis on the core spec, but we'll touch briefly on the Chronomancer, the Mirage, and the Virtuoso. The Mesmer has quite a unique profession mechanic in their Shatter abilities. Mind Rack, which deals direct strike damage, or on-hit damage. Cry of Frustration, which deals condition damage over time. Diversion, which dazes the target. Remember, dazes interrupt the enemy and cause them not to be able to use any of their abilities for a time. However, they still can move around. Then lastly, Distortion, which grants the Mesmer temporary invulnerability for a short time. These Shatter skills have their effects further enhanced by the amount of illusions that are shattered when the skills are used. Mesmers create clones and phantasms by utilizing weapons, utility skills, and even some traits. Clones are weaker copies of the Mesmer themselves, however they simply auto-attack nearby enemies, while phantasms are tied to weapon skills and perform a special attack before reverting back into a clone. Each time a clone is created, it appears here, right above the Shatter skills. At any given time, the Mesmer can have a max of three clones up and an unlimited number of phantasms, however they only stay up for a short period of time. When utilizing a Shatter skill, it destroys all active clones, dealing more damage Damage, having a longer daze or longer invulnerability based off of the amount of clones shattered. All of these shatter effects occur near the clones, but the Mesmer also casts the shatter at their location as well. Are you confused yet? The five trait lines that the Mesmer brings to the table are Domination, Dueling, Chaos, Inspiration, and Illusions. Domination has a heavy emphasis on interrupting enemies, whether it be stunning or dazing them, whilst also applying a number of stacks of vulnerability. Vulnerability is a condition that causes the target to take increased damage from all sources for a short time, stacking up to 25. Dueling has a great focus on dodging enemies and inflicting critical strikes. This trait line can also improve strike damage as well as condition damage. The Chaos trait line is defensive oriented and gives regeneration which heals you over time. This also can randomly apply boons to yourself and conditions to enemies. Boons are the equivalent of buffs in Guild Wars 2. Inspiration is oriented around supporting allies and granting defensive boons, whereas the Illusion trait line vastly improves your shatter abilities, allowing you to deal more damage and apply more conditions to decimate foes. The Mesmer has quite a few varieties of trait line options, however the Mesmer tends to have an emphasis on condition damage and confusion applications. The Mesmer has lots of really interesting weapons, specifically on how they are used. They have access also to weapon swap, allowing them to change between two weapon sets while they are in combat. Without a doubt, the coolest iteration of the weapon skills is through the Greatsword for the Mesmer. You use it completely at range, actually really far away, and you shoot a massive energy beam at targets on top of doing great AoE damage with some crowd control. The staff tends to be more defensive oriented of a weapon, allowing the Mesmer to escape and protect themselves whilst also applying a number of conditions. The main hand scepter is a medium ranged weapon that is defensive oriented but can also still apply a number of conditions and summon clones fairly quickly. The sword is a melee oriented weapon that is focused on deceptive and evasive upfront combat. The offhand focus can improve your speed and slow enemy whilst also damaging a number of enemies at the same time. The pistol can disable enemies and deal significant damage to a single target extremely quickly. The sword balances out some high damage with a block and then the torch adds blinding, control, burning, and stealth to the kit. Regardless of the weapon choice, the Mesmer can meet the demands of any situation. The utility skills of the Mesmer have quite a few options depending on the way that they wish to approach enemies' interior. Their utility skills are Illusion, Glamour, Manipulation, Mantra, and Signets. 
Clearly, Signets grant passive effects while they are equipped and then have powerful on-demand active abilities when used. However, once these active abilities are used, their passive effect goes on cooldown until the skill is recharged. The illusion skills summon illusions on demand while giving you some added effects, either stealth, some blocking, or even removing boons from enemies. Glamour skills create powerful effects on the ground near your cursor with a variety of different abilities, such as reflecting projectiles, allowing stealth, and even creating a portal for your allies to teleport through. Manipulation skills are more defensive oriented, allowing them to send conditions to your enemies or teleport a great distance. Some even allow you to revive allies temporarily to give them a chance at fighting again. Lastly, mantras, which have multiple charges and the last charge being more powerful than the rest. These tend to be support oriented to allies and also capable of controlling enemies. Remember, deception and control is the name of the game for the Mesmer. The focus of any good Mesmer is going to be manipulate, distract, and overwhelm enemies. Because of the illusions tanking enemies, the Mesmer can inflict a number of conditions quickly and then stun and daze them while their health bars rot away. The trick to learning Mesmer is, of course, when you should use your shatters. Because your shatters delete your clones, you can be vulnerable to a counterattack, especially when dealing with stronger enemies. A good skill to learn is timing your shatters appropriately to allow their full effects to go through, but being able to summon new clones quickly to distract your enemies and tank them for you. When using the Mesmer, remember you have quite a number of escapes and stealth to boot, so use them liberally when you are pressured. What do you think about the Mesmer? Tell me down in the comment section below. Some quick leveling tips as you are raising your illusionist to level 80. First, lean heavily into the illusion skills and trait lines. This ensures that you have quite a few clones and strengthen them to boot to handle anything that you may encounter during your leveling process. Second, remember that your shatter skills also do their effects near you, meaning that you don't always need to have your illusions on your kill target to have an effect. As long as you were close, you can still get that ability off. Thirdly, confusion is a great condition, especially for enemies who have a number of skills to utilize. Confusion inflicts damage over time, but deals significantly higher amounts of damage to targets when they utilize their skills, either weapons or utilities. With the diverse playstyle of the Mesmer, they can fit a number of roles in any endgame content. However, the Mesmer tends to lean heavily towards the condition damage route, given the amount of torment, confusion, among amongst other things that they can inflict. This means that they can benefit heavily from the Viper straight line, the Carrion trait line, or even the Grieving stats line. Counter to that, because they can do some crazy strike damage as well, they can also be very effective with the Berserkers, the Marauders, or stat sets. If you want a simple no-brainer use for stats, you can of course choose the Celestial stat line which is always a great choice. The Chronomancer is the Mesmer's elite specialization for the Heart of Thorns expansion. The Chronomancer can now manipulate time, changing their shatter skills slightly to offer additional effects. Mind Rack becomes Split Second, which deals their normal shatter damage, then it deals the strike damage again after a short time. Cry of Frustration becomes Rewinder, that confuses enemies like normal, but then recharges the skill for each clone shatter. Time Sync replaces Diversion, by by dazing enemies and then applying the slow condition. Distortion stays the same. Unique to the Chronomancer, they also get the Shatter skill Continuum Split, which shatters clones and then allows the Chronomancer to revert back to the starting point with the health, endurance, and skill recharge that they had before using Continuum Split. This means that they can utilize all of their skills and abilities within that window and then revert back to where they were just moments before and use all of those skills and abilities again. The Chronomancer also gains access to well abilities, which offer some great area of effects, both offensive and defensive. Each of the wells have an initial effect followed by an after effect when they expire. The Chronomancer then gains access to the shield weapon, which can block attacks, and if it successfully blocks an attack, it can use that ability again and block more attacks. The shield also can stun enemies in a wave, and then when the wave returns, it could stun them again. This mage is always on time. The Mirage is the elite specialization for the Path of Fire expansion. The Mirage foregoes the extra 
extra shatter of effects to become an incredibly elusive duelist. Their dodge roll now becomes Mirage Cloak, which evades all attacks for a time like normal, but allows the Mirage to continue their skill usage, unlike the dodge roll ability. The Mirage Cloak also gains access to ambush skills, which have additional effects and damage whilst also still evading. This ability can only be used when the Mirage Cloak is active. The Mirage Cloak ability pairs incredibly well with the new skills that the Mirage has access to which is deceptions the deception skills have two effects typically they are movement oriented allowing the mirage to move shadow step and break targeting on enemies shortly after the use of those skills the mirage can gather the mirage mirrors which appear directly where that skill was utilized which grants the mirage cloak ability for a short time without using any of the endurance the mirage picks up the axe which can shadow step dash and slice enemies to bits inflicting a number of heavy, heavy conditions. Seriously, are you sure that you saw this illusion? The Virtuoso is the end of Dragon's Elite specialization for the Mesmer, and it completely removes the clone system in favor of Mind Blades, which float just above the Virtuoso. These can be utilized as an ammo system for their shatters, which becomes incredibly range-oriented. Mind Rack becomes Blade Song Harmony, which throws all stocked blades at the target dealing immediate damage. Cry of Frustration becomes Blade Song Sorrow, that fires all stocked blades, inflicting a number of conditions on the enemies. Diversion becomes Blade Song Dissonance, which combines all of your blades into a single large sword that dazes targets that are hit. Distortion becomes Blade Song Distortion, which consumes all stocked blades to grant him vulnerability. The Virtuoso also gains access to a new shatter skill called Blade Turn Requiem. This consumes blades to block attacks whilst spinning those blades around you, dealing damage to nearby enemies. The Virtuoso's new skills are psionic skills that add control, damage, and of course, stock new blades for their use in their shatter skills. Lastly, the Virtuoso gains access to the Dagger Main Hand that slices enemies and gains a new blade stack as their skills are being utilized. This is the true Mind Blade. Overall, the Mesmer is an incredibly diverse caster, adept at controlling, confusing, and decimate enemies leaving them wondering what the heck just hit them. Given its great ability to dance in and around combat, a Mesmer always puts on a show. If you are interested in learning more about the Master of the Undeath in the Necromancer, click this video here. Stay caffeinated, folks.